Welcome to the MMG Podcast, Episode 2. I am joined by Go Cubs. Hello, Chris. Hello. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. I, it's, it, you already is... asked me that before we hit the record button. <laughs> we, ha- we have to make sure that we have we establish our emotions for this podcast, right. you know? So yeah, we have to emotions let, are important. Let the people know. Um... So welcome to the podcast. Uh, we are we last time we talked about March Madness before it all happened. Now that's done over with. So we're gonna recap that in just a second here. Later on in the episode, we're gonna do some NFL schedule predictions. That's gonna be coming out in the next few weeks. Um, the preseason schedule is actually gonna be announced on Monday. But no one really cares about that. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll talk a little upcoming playoffs with the NHL and NBA to give our predictions for the the championship games and the champions and we'll throw an MLB in there we'll we'll also predict the championships for that uh but let's get started with March Madness go Cubs what did you think with the whole tournament I think the the entire tournament was really fun to keep track of because there were there were a lot of upsets until two number one seeds ended up in the finals, but that's beside the point. Yeah, um, I I think yeah I have a few uh, like the discussion points I guess that I wanted to bring that up because there were a lot there were quite a bit of upsets. I don't think this was as great of a March Madness as it was last year. Maybe because I'm just I'm just remembering the Villanova North Carolina game from the championship last year, and I was just remembering that, but I, I know there was also a ton of great upsets, especially in the first round. Uh, yeah. This time around, there wasn't a lot of first round upsets, but I got, they started really getting it in later rounds. Um, yeah. But, uh, what if if you watched any of the games, what would you say was your favorite game to watch out of all of them? Uh, Wisconsin beating Villanova. Fuck Wisconsin, but uh, uh, I that was one of the things in my smash bracket predicted correctly was Wisconsin beating Villanova. So be, watching that and also like being around family watching it and be like, "Hey, I picked this." Yeah. was 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 really fun. I so. I have that written down as my favorite too. I, I Wisconsin Villanova was very fun. Uh Duke and South Carolina was another one I felt was a very fun game. One that my favorite I think my favorite upset of the tournament just cuz Duke Oh, is, definitely. Duke is always a powerhouse and it's always interesting when they find when they do end up falling. Um uh but it, I yeah, I think it was there was a lot of fun ones. I think if I re- watched it in its full in its entirety, I think uh, Florida versus Wisconsin was probably another one that was going to be on my favorites, but unfortunately, I walked away as their buzzer beater to win the game happened. <laughs> Did not watch that live, and I was pissed. Oh my god! Um, another one that a lot of people are talking about as being a, a good one was Kentucky uh, at North Carolina, um, and so that was a that that, that was I I didn't really pay much attention to that because that was like. You you had the, the four that were like three of them uh, had combined one championship and that was from the thirties uh, and right. so you had North Carolina and Kentucky being like kind of these this battle of juggernauts and stuff and I I usually I, I like watching those kind of games because I'm always fascinated to see who comes out on top but I wasn't really into it because I was just kind of like I I, I just want to see one of the three underdogs the win three other teams win yeah so I was just like uh, you know not not a big fan if it was the championship game I'd be definitely into it but it's just at that point I was just kind of like yeah not really I'm not really a fan but yeah um. And unfortunately, the juggernaut did end up winning North Carolina, um, and well, not only winning that game but winning the whole thing. Uh, and uh, obviously, you had Gonzaga in your tournament ladder, so obviously, yes. so I'm sure you weren't happy when North Carolina <laughs> came out on top. Of I'm, the not, I'm just not happy when North Carolina wins anything. Yeah, there's a lot of a uh, lot of talk about, especially leaning into the championship game regarding the the, the North Carolina's past their. Uh, their academic fraud uh, cases against them. Uh, they... Call yourself the Rams. You don't need to be the fucking Tar Heels and be special. <laughs> and apparently, there's anger with the mascot name as well. Uh, but <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I'm not. I, I, I don't really. I don't really care for North Carolina a lot. But um, you know, they, they. I mean, they, they won fair square. It would have just been nice to see a team like Gonzaga, who's always been like a spoiler in a lot of the March Madness uh, stuff to actually be able to get a championship, but 
you know, it, it, hopefully they could maybe try again next year, uh, and then we'll see what happens. But um, t- who was more Team Chaos to you, Xavier or South Carolina, would you say? Um, South Carolina made it farther, and they were definitely in the uh, – I would say I would say harder harder bracket to get through mm-hmm. just because you had uh, both Duke and Villanova in there. Obviously, they didn't face both of them, uh, but the fact that Xavier was an 11 seed and took down the teams that they did with their mascot being just a fucking blue blob. <laughs> I, it, I would say that Xavier is the more team chaos. I I love that that mascot so much. I um. I, I just love the fact that it doesn't even have a name. It's literally just called the Blue Blob. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Xavier, yeah, if, if you look at the resumes with the, between the two teams, uh, South Carolina started the tournament as a favorite to beat Marquette, at least as far as I remember. They were 7th seed facing a 10th seed. Um, the, and then they played Duke, knocked out Duke, so that, that was the number two seed. Then they beat Baylor at number three, Florida at number four, yeah. and then they lost to uh, Gonzaga. Um, and, but and then you had Xavier, who started out and was, for, throughout the entire tournament, an underdog. You had Maryland. They beat Maryland uh, as a – they were uh, – uh, Xavier was an 11th seed. Maryland was 6th seed. Florida State was number 3 seed, and Xavier took them out. Uh, Xavier took out Arizona, which that, that was actually, I think, one of my favorite games. Oh, Xavier, yeah. A number 11 seed taking down a 2 seed. Uh, and oh, then – That was the champions. Yeah, that was – yeah, that was a really unfortunate for a lot of people. People were, were really pissed about that. Yeah, uh, but and then once again, Gonzaga ended up taking out that team chaos um, at, at, in the number one. But they they it, it actually wasn't really close. <laughs> I think no. I think the argument for South Carolina would be that every single game, even in their loss, was pretty close. Um, but it, yeah, no, it was an absolute blowout for and it was an absolute blowout for Xavier uh, when they lost. But it was um, I I agree with you though. I think Xavier was more of the uh, of the team to 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 topple all the juggernauts and it was it was so much fun to watch and i i it's always exciting when that happens um but yeah uh what was your uh final point total we we use espn tournament challenge so what was your final tournament point total my mine was eight ten. Eight ten. yeah i was if if yeah. gonzaga would have won it would have been 10 uh I believe eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. Wow. Yeah, I would have done very well. That's a good score. Yeah, uh, and I I got five eighty, and that was from actually legit picking. Uh, you know, just just picking on my own, and, and you you chose the smash the smash bros route has really worked with you over the years, and uh, yeah, it's insane how like accurate it could kind of be. Yeah, yeah. So I, I commend you on that. Tip my hat to you, and I think it, will, it'll be interesting to see. Cause I, you, you did once. I, I think we talked about it last episode, but you did correctly, uh, pick the uh, Duke winning in two thousand. Duke two years ago, yes. Yeah, two thousand fifteen. So yeah. we're not going to talk about Michigan State. <laughs> Oh wait! I forgot that you picked. Okay, so we let's let's talk about it. <laughs> no, yeah, we're Michigan not. State in 2016, and they lost in the first round to Middle Tennessee. Yeah, that was that was a rough one. It's okay though. Except we weren't going to talk about it, but okay, let's just let's. Move on. <laughs> well, but you kind of you almost made the rebound. You got you got Gonzaga at least to the championship game. I, yeah, I, that's I, true. Again, so you, you, you're good. You're good. You, well, it, that just means that next year my bracket's going to suck. It, let's, it also means every year. We hopefully that won't be the case. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I I'm looking forward to next year's March Madness and it, and the chaos it always brings. But um. We're we're gonna have a lot of fun sports stuff happening in the next few months uh, with the NHL and NBA playoffs. Uh, we'll get to that though. We're gonna start with a less relevant sport, uh, our, our favorite sport in the NFL. Um, we have uh, the schedule is gonna be released around. I think uh, Adam Schefter reported around April seventeenth, uh, around the like the, basically near the end of April. Um, so the 
basically what I've done the past few years and what we're going to do right now is uh, we like predicting uh, the schedule, the week one schedule, uh, as well as uh, the Thanksgiving slate. Uh, and uh, I, I, at least for me, I, I, I might, I'm going to do a quick prediction for Christmas as well because I think they're going to do something special for that. That's but that's just going off of assumptions of what they've done in the past. Um, but you, you and I are going to try to form our own little schedules here uh, cool. and to figure out uh, what is going to work out best. So um, let's start with TNF. I think both both of you, both of us, uh, bl- uh, believe that it's going to be Falcons at the Patriots for the kickoff uh, week one. That is, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, I, that, um, I know that there has been there's some speculation uh, that that might not be the case because they might want Falcons playing the following week on Sunday night football um, on week two because of their new stadium that they're gonna have this season. Oh, you're right. Um, the, so they they're they're thinking like, okay, maybe it's not a good idea to have them on NBC two weeks in a row. Um, I don't think that's going to be a factor. If anything, they'll just push off the 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 new stadium opening till week three, maybe, and then they'll just have them on NBC then, or do it on ESPN week two or something like that. So I, I don't know. There's there's I guess a little other factors, but I I think it's going to be Falcons and Patriots in the rematch of uh, one of the great Super Bowls of our lifetime. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, I I have now an afternoon slate of games, but we'll we'll wait on that. I'll, we'll get to that near the end. Let's talk about Sunday night football. Who do you think is going to be playing on some, Sunday night of week one? Sunday night football is going to be the great matchup between the Ravens and the Steelers. This is one of my favorite rivalries, and it always ends up poorly for me because I really like the Ravens and I really hate the Steelers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, well, I, I remember. The, that the past few years, though, I think two, 2015, Ravens sweeped the Steelers all together. Um, and I think Ravens actually beat them in the playoffs the year before that. And then th- this past year, I think the, the Steelers beat them for the first time in last December in order to clinch a playoff spot. Um, maybe maybe I'm just remembering that and I'm still salty. But. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, but hey... You know, it, it, that that was probably the biggest game other than, like, as the playoff game uh, from, like, 2014. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I yeah I, I would really love that. Uh, I think that would be a great game. Uh, I have ran down Packers at Cowboys. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, that, oh, shit. that would be good. That would be uh, the rematch of the NFL, uh, of the NFC Divisional round. Uh, and that was a, the best game, I think, of the playoffs other than, I guess, the Super Bowl. But actually, you know what? No, I'll go out on a limb and say I think that was a better game for the Super Bowl, just because that it was, it, it was an earlier comeback, I guess, with the Cowboys, or and then like it was kind of neck and neck throughout, where it was literally just a demolition course for the Patriots, uh, throughout that that ending there. But I don't know. Yeah. It was. It, it, I I guess I guess you could debate that, but I think Packers at Cowboys the same week of a Falcons mm-hmm. and Patriots, um, that would be great. Um, yeah. and I think it would be very exciting. Uh, what do you think about your Monday night doubleheader? Uh, so I have two. Okay, yes. Uh, I have Tampa Bay at Green Bay, and I have Raiders at Dolphins. Okay. Not much, not much uh, substance there other than the fact that, like, I think just Raiders and Dolphins is, like, the one, like, oh, that's weird thing. <laughs> for for Monday night. Now yeah. keep in mind, this is uh the I think the Monday night game, uh the Monday night game that that last game is going to be at ten o'clock at Eastern time, and that's in oh. Miami. But okay. But I mean, I there's a I mean I think I think there's a good chance of it that it could happen. Did people just be up pretty late <laughs> over yeah. there? Uh, but I mean, you also have you also have the Raiders in there who are from the West Coast. So I think there, I think there's a lot of, there's a good amount of logic there to have it. Because why? Yeah. Not? And f- who cares about people? People in Florida probably don't even care about that. They'll just be they'll they're they don't probably, understand the state of Florida. Yeah, they'll just they'll be up till five o'clock in the morning anyway, like they usually are, and that's okay. Um. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so let's. Uh, so now I I, th- I think those are, are great, and I, I think uh, I I I would be a fan of 
either of those matchups. I think Tampa Bay and Green Bay would especially be good considering that you now have two teams that are really offensive heavy. Yeah. Um, so that could be a great shootout. And uh, Raiders and Dolphins, just because they, they are two teams that made the playoffs last year, uh, just a nice storyline uh, for that. Um, for me, I have my, on Monday Night Football, the first the first game I think of is going to be the Giants at the Broncos. So two defensive heavy teams, two teams that don't have great offenses, so it's going to be just a like a, just a slugfest, essentially. Uh, I like it. And then you have the Chargers at the Raiders, so I'm with you on the Raiders being the, on the 10 o'clock, but they'll be hosting the Chargers, who will now be known as the Los Angeles Chargers. Right. Uh, because that's a th- new thing now. Um, so that I think that they did something similar last year where you had the Rams going to the 49ers in a late-night game. That was a terrible game. I fell asleep during it. Uh, that was a shutout, I remember. Uh, but hopefully the Los Angeles Chargers debut is a little bit better. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> all right, as for uh, the the uh, slate in the afternoon, I'll just rattle them off real quick. Uh, on CBS uh, at 1 o'clock will be Dolphins at Bills. That will that, That's like the, the lead one in that hour. Uh, that will be covered by Ian Eagle and Dan Fouts. Uh, Colts at Bengals, Browns at Jaguars, and Jets at Saints round up the CBS 1 o'clock slot. On Fox at 1 o'clock, you have uh, Redskins at Chiefs, which will be with the number one team, Joe Buck, Troy Aikman. Eagles at Panthers, Cardinals at Lions rounds up that. Now at 4 o'clock, I have the Titans at Steelers, which is the debut of Jim Nance, Tony Romo the the new <laughs> announcing team because yeah. that's a new thing now no more phil sims at least not in the number one team anymore ravens at vikings and texas at 49ers round out the four o'clock saw at cbs uh and the c and cbs has the double header in the first week that's just the pattern that they've had for the scheduling um yeah. and fox uh, we'll finish it up at four, we'll have finish up their slay at four o'clock with the rams at seahawks and then the Bears at Buccaneers as well. So that's there you go. Long, long list. Uh, Bears at Buccaneers specifically, just to bring up, that is Mike Lennon playing against his old team. Felt like that would be a good week one starter uh, for that. Um, all right. Let's move on to Thanksgiving now because this is the one that we all gather around the turkey and watch uh, uh, some good old football. And uh, you actually have a slate that's very similar to, I think, 2014 or 2015, one of those. But oh, it, cool. it, so it, it would be a little bit of a repeat. But I, I like, I like the, I like the idea for the games though. So go ahead and, and uh, read them off for me. Uh, I have Bears at Lions, Eagles at Cowboys, and Bengals at Broncos. Love the primetime game, Bengals at Broncos, because that's always yeah. that's always interesting. That I, that, I, I want the like, Bengals to be good, dude. <laughs> the Bengals at Broncos, I think, are uh, are a team are two teams that I think are, could make the playoffs. Or uh, Bengals are a little bit iffy, but um, you know, they you never know with them. They they're always over all over the place, really. But yeah. Um, it, it, but always, I always enjoy the Bengals Broncos game. I want my cat ball. The cat ball. Uh, side note: cat ball is essentially Goku's dream of having two cat teams playing in the Super Bowl. So that not, could, not just any cat team. Well, well, yes. Yeah, specific, like originally, it was the Panthers versus the Bengals. However, if there does occur a time when it's the Panthers versus the Lions in the NFC Championship and the Bengals versus the Jaguars in the AFC Championship, I will be the happiest person. That that's like that's the cat that's the cat bowl qua, like quadruple threat right there. Yeah. Um, you know, Jaguars at Lions would probably be a never never be a Super Bowl that actually exists, but uh, the I, I, so, I'm sure either I'm sure either team. Uh, at some point, we'll make the Super Bowl, and maybe they'll have the Bengals and Panthers there. But they, it, it would be really awesome to see the Cats fight it out. You know, yeah. like the, the Cat, the Cat NFL teams fight it out. Uh, it would be, it, it would be insane. Now, um, the for my for my slate. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, as for the Bears at Lions and the Eagles at Cowboys. Yeah, that that's actually I think directly from the 2014 NFL season. But oh. uh, the Bears at Lions. Uh, I think it has they they're pretty much 
always I think splitting the series I, as as far as I know uh they I think that they are usually the ones that end up like uh they they usually are very competitive in those games and Eagles and Cowboys yeah. is a good rivalry so yeah good Thanksgiving slate for me I have the Falcons at the Lions uh okay. Seahawks at the Cowboys so these are all playoff teams yeah. um and then for the for the primetime slate we're going Dolphins at Chiefs holy shit all right I can dig that Dolphins at Chiefs, another AFC playoff, AFC playoff teams battling it out. Uh, and Miami Dolphins are pretty popular. The Chiefs so, are getting up there now. Uh, those are like the most clashing team colors. If you put them together, the Chiefs and the Dolphins. Yeah, very like red, yellow versus bright light blue and orange. Yeah, that's it's, yeah. it's a little extreme, but I I'm down for it. And under the lights in Arrowhead Stadium. Let's go. I always, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for games in Arrowhead. That, that's one of my favorite yeah. stadiums uh, to watch on TV. Uh, now, uh, as for uh, the the Christmas slate, you didn't end up doing any predictions for these, but uh, I, as far as I know, because Christmas this year is going to be on Monday. I know that the NFL likes putting in at least at least two games on Christmas. Uh, and so they're going to have the normal Sunday slate for Christmas. It's not going to be anything special with that, but I think they're going to have a double header for that Christmas game, those Christmas games. So I say it's going to be Chiefs at Raiders and Cardinals at Seahawks in potential, uh, division clincher games. That's, I think would be in week 16. So exciting times, uh, ahead for that. So, uh, yeah. we'll see if we are right I, I I mean I think last year I got like a few week one games right, um, but I I will see what happens. I, I I'm very excited for the release of the NFL schedule so I can analyze it to no end. <laughs> um, what, let's uh let's move now. I'm sure everyone that's that's so sick of football right now just wants to focus on the sports or killing themselves right now. I'm gonna okay. go back to football. <laughs> let's 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 go. Let's let's go to the sports that actually are relevant as we are nearing NHL playoffs, which start this Wednesday, and NBA playoffs, which I believe start around that time. I think like Friday, uh, yeah, or Saturday or something. But um, in the NHL, uh, we're we're gonna do some predictions for that as well as the MLB in terms of who we think is gonna make the championship game and who we think is gonna come out the victor. So let's start with the NHL. Uh, what would you say is the or like the most likely championship uh, matchup for you in your case? All right, so you know how earlier I said I have kind of like a wild card pick. Yes, that's when I told you who I had as my winner. Oh, okay. That's the, this is your your wild your wild card pick. Okay. Wild, wild card. Oh. Uh... Duh. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, so so Minnesota Wild. So who are they facing then? If uh, they're they're facing the Penguins, and they're going to beat the Penguins. They're going to beat the Penguins. I mean, they're they're in second place in their division right now, behind the Blackhawks. But I think the Blackhawks are, uh, while they're good and could re- could realistically go all the way this year, and I would like to see that because playoff hockey with the Blackhawks is fucking insane, and I love it. Uh, just just making a random prediction. Yeah, absolutely, and then. Do you know how many games that that would be a win in? Uh, let's do let let's do six. In six, okay. Uh, as for me, uh, I I think the Penguins are going to be in the in the championship as well, and I think they're going to get their ass kicked as well. I'm going to take the Ducks to win it. Uh, Fuck win the it. Ducks, dude! Come win, on. Win, no, hey, wait a minute. They win it in seven because they they've been on a hot streak lately. They've been they've been winning lots of games yeah. down the stretch. And I think that the Ducks, I, I think that they have a really good shot to win it all. I think that they, I don't think that there's a team in the league right now that's going to intimidate them. Could they beat them? Sure. But I I, th- I, just, I, I don't think they're going to back down from a battle. I just hate hockey teams based on birds, apparently. <laughs> Uh, let's let's do uh, let's do NBA now. Now, on either of us, I think out of all the other sports, we are the least. Uh, I knowledgeable or just not really into the NBA. I'm yeah. trying to get into the NBA because I've I've enjoyed 
uh, college basketball a lot, but and making that transition to NBA is a little, makes it it's like a little slowed down the game. Um, but it's uh, just worse. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, don't like know, it. I don't know what it is. Uh, I I I enjoy some of the athletes from it, uh, and the, some of the names like the Denver Nuggets and the Utah Jazz make me laugh. But, uh, <laughs> you, know, you like jazz? I, I I like jazz. I just don't understand why they moved when they moved the team out of New Orleans to Utah. Why they kept the name Jazz? Because it makes you no like fucking jazz. sense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so let's uh, let's try to think of a, a potential championship prediction because the past few years it's just been all Warriors and Cavaliers. That's another reason why I don't like the NBA. It, it, it's been just top heavy, and you got yeah. you got no change. But uh, they've so far split a championship. You know, Warriors won in 2015, and Cleveland won in 2016. Uh, who's gonna be your 2017 champion, Go Cubs? Uh, neither of those actually. Good. I'll it's gonna it. be the Rockets, the Houston Rockets. Oh, who are they got? Who are they gonna play? The Cavaliers. Oh, the Cavaliers. All <laughs> right. All right. So it's the it's the Rockets, the Cavaliers, and how many games will the it take for the Rockets to win it all? Uh, let's go five. Five. All right. So good old James Harden, the big beard guy, getting his ring. Yeah, sure. Uh, you don't, you have no idea who I'm talking about, do you? Nope. Okay, cool. <laughs> All I know is that that's the team that Yao Ming used to play on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yao Ming's cool. All right. Let's. Uh, for me, I I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the second best teams in both conferences. I'm gonna go to sure. Celtics and the Spurs. I like the Spurs a lot, honestly. Yeah. I yeah. Greg Pop- Popovich is is fantastic. Tim uh, Duncan has been just like a cool guy for a while. Yeah. Well, he yeah he's now he's retired, of course. Well, yeah. But he, but yes, that his his legacy will forever live on with the Spurs. And uh, uh, well, good 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 news for you then, because I I say the Spurs are winning, uh, and I say they're going to win in six games, um, and uh, they're going to continue their uh, their dominance in the NBA. So mm-hmm. good stuff. Let's uh now now we don't really know the the playoff slate at all because it literally just started, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> baseball season. But uh, the Cubs are uh, your, your team is they're they're now going for their title defense. What do you yes. think is going to happen with the championship, my friend? Uh, I don't want to go through another heart attack. Okay. <laughs> so, I actually didn't have the Cubs in the finals. Okay, that's. It'll probably change when I get closer, and I'll I'll want to root for them again. But I d- d- in just like picking shit. Yeah. Uh, I said the Red Sox were going to win. Over. The Nationals. Red, Red Sox over the Nationals. Yeah, the Red Sox, I think they, a lot of people are picking them that as a, as a potential American League favorite. Uh, another team... Well, they got Chris Sale now. Uh, well, right, and Chris Sale is one of the best pitchers in the league, really. But yeah. um, you, you, have, uh, you have that team, the Red Sox. You have the Indians who might want to try to get the AL, AL Championship back in. But I say... You have another favorite to win, uh, a, a, a new team that's going to win, uh, and I say the Houston Astros, <laughs> a team. I, oh wait, wait a minute, because they are actually considered a favorite, or not, not a favorite, but as a. Why are you laughing? You're making me nervous. <laughs> Chris, for the longest time, when the Cubs were really bad. We were always like, well, at least we're not the Astros. Well, there you go, man. And because then they the... changed divisions, and then we were all like, fuck, we're going to be last place. <laughs> the Astros... And then 2015 happened. <laughs> yeah, well, at the, the Astros are considered a very awesome team uh, uh, this year, a very built, stacked team. Uh, they, and some people actually have them go into the World Series, and so do I, because I say they're going to beat the Cubs... A former division rival. Oh no, God! Oh, don't do this to me. And and it, it's going to be in seven games, so you're really going to have. Oh, you know. Fun time. Oh, dude, no! Don't do that. <laughs> no. Dude, no. you're going to be so wrong when October comes around. So it's okay. It, it does the thought kill you that much? Yes. <laughs> dude, it, it killed me when the Cubs came back and had momentum. Right. Yeah. That the is... Cubs would be the favorite to win in that situation. Like, uh, yeah, that's as long as we didn't th- blow a three-one lead or let let them score thirty-one points. That's still just fucking. 
Uh, no, oh, oh no, I'm sorry. It's gonna be three and zero Cubs, and it's gonna be a four game comeback. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. Um, it, I I I don't know. I just I I always love a good uh, a team that has never won a championship before coming out victorious, uh, and that's part of the reason why I picked. Oh them yeah, I guess that. Uh, and uh, and yeah, it's 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 in terms of early season predictions, that was one of those name one of those teams out there that I've I've seen a lot that a lot of people talking about. So I was just like, all right, we'll, we'll roll with the Astros. You know what else I fucking hate? What is that? All this talk about like in every form of pop culture. Oh, it's been low over hundred since the Cubs won. Well, there are some teams that have never fucking won. Yeah. Newer, but like, you don't see people making fun of the Texas Rangers. Yeah. They've never won. Astros yeah. are number one. Yeah, you have. Yeah, it's like this. It, it's a very uh, it, the Cubs. Many people label as a tortured franchise, but. You know, what about those 109 and 110 year olds who already experienced the championship for the Cubs? Damn. Yeah. So, well, luckily you don't have to deal with that anymore because the Cubs have right. now won the World Series, and now we are the we are the most recent team to have won a World Series. Right. Uh, which is, I'm sure you said that sentence is still not believing that it happened. <laughs> yeah. And I've been to Chicago since then, so it still exists. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Go. Cubs made the prediction. Uh, prior to the World Series, or actually, way way before the Cubs, I think were even good still. Uh, yeah, it was that, like in 2012. My belief, my my belief was that if the Cubs ever won the World Series, the city of Chicago would cease to exist. Yeah, not like riots or anything, but it would literally like pop out of reality. Like you're driving on the highway, and then suddenly you're in Lake Michigan. I just I love I love that description. <laughs> like he just you're just driving down and like whoop you're in Texas now. All right, well. <laughs> well, no, no, you're you're in Lake Michigan because you're like driving to Chicago and then you're just in the water now. You you like get pet you get like get teleported past where Chicago was and now you're in Lake Michigan. Right. <laughs> oh my god, that is that that's really funny to me. I don't know why. Um. So the I I now so I, I I'm always a fan of, of new teams winning. Uh, I kind of wish that I didn't pick the Ducks and Spurs, but I felt like that was the most realistic uh, because uh, in terms of like playoffs uh, or these upcoming playoffs, I could sort of of teams that have been playing pretty well. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, if I if I had to say like a team that I'd love to see win, uh, and be in the NBA. Uh, I fucking the team I was just talking about the Utah Jazz. Let's go! Come on, so, get the you get this. You get like jazz. I like Jazz. I like the Jazz to win the championship. And then in hockey, uh, I I mean I don't know why not the Calgary Flames or something <laughs> or some, someone <laughs> random like that or the, or the Sharks, the San Jose Sharks. They came close I, last year. Yeah, I still think it's hilarious. The last year, the the one Canadian team made it to the NBA playoffs, but not a single Canadian hockey team did. Yeah, right. And then, and like Canadians were salty as fuck over that because they were yeah. they were they. I, I, <laughs> I remember when that happened, and they were like, "Well, no one's gonna watch the NHL playoffs anymore because there's no Canadians in it." <laughs> it's just like, stop it! You you, you got the, the, those Tim Horton signs aren't gonna mean anything. Right, <laughs> Tim Horton. Had to. Yeah, the the pe- actually the Penguin Championship it, it it didn't ever happen because there was no Canadians at all in the playoffs. So that those playoffs right. just never happened. Um, uh, I almost I actually almost said Edmonton Oilers, but I was just like, oh wait, that was a ty- dynasty at one point. So I can't, we can't pick the, that team, but that would be pretty interesting. And yeah. uh, I have I have a love for Cam Talbot, who is is a former Ranger, who is now the starting goalie for the Oilers. If if they if they can make it to the playoffs, and I'm a Rangers fan, and I don't have no hope for us to make it that far anyway, so it's all right. <laughs> sad, sad, sad life of a Rangers fan. Unfortunate. Yeah. All right, Black Hawks, Hawks fan. Fucking three championships in this fucking decade. Dude, God. dude. <laughs> I've been starved my entire life of championships <laughs> until the Blackhawks won. Now, yeah, now you have, yeah, you have the Cubs. Yeah, now the Blackhawks and the Cubs. Yeah, you have all the the Bulls. The Bulls won when I was like two. <laughs> yeah, the nineties. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, so I'll, I'll I'll take that as like happening in my lifetime. 
Yeah, and then there's the Bears who made who just made the Super Bowl once. Yeah, it broke my fucking heart, dude. That game started with uh with a kick return touchdown by Devin Hester, and the Bears didn't win. Well, it was quite the start though, uh, and you'll always you'll always remember that, and try not to remember the rest of the game essentially. <laughs> that 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 game is what started my dislike for Peyton Manning. <laughs> not as a person, just as a football player. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's how. You, that's kind of like. That's kind of like LeBron James with you, right? You can't. You. you well, I just. I just don't like LeBron James. Oh, in general. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't really speak to how he is as a person. I just. I just like don't like people's attitudes towards him. Right. I don't know, it's, it's weird. Yeah. Um. You made a fucking pachinko machine game show, <laughs> hosted by Chris Hardwick. <laughs> oh my god uh that I, I that's uh that shows his career is going through the roof is once you make a pachinko game show that's when you've hit it big time my friend good for you lebron james uh all right let, let's uh, let's sign off we got uh we we hope hopefully i may i guess i don't know in the coming maybe next month or something we'll have another podcast it, it, this, these, these are right now kind of just sporadic whenever we get the chance to fill them and enjoy them uh, Maybe the next one won't be about sports. Who knows? Right. We could do. We'll do all all uh, maybe gaming news because what we'll, we'll E three E three is coming up in June. We got. Oh, you're right. We could do a whole podcast dedicated to E three and what we want to see uh, out of that potentially if we if we were really into that um, that idea. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We we got we 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 we'll, we'll try not to do too much sports. We'll do we'll do some more. Uh, other reality show stuff, video game stuff, and anything else that comes to our mind because we love talking about life stuff. Yeah. Let's talk politics and religion next podcast. All right. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we hope, or listening, we hope you all enjoyed. Uh, be good to one another, be kind to one another, and we will see you guys in the next podcast. Goodbye. Go long. <laughs>